afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Felix Becker from, uh, from Ilmenau University. And I would like to talk today about amphibious robots which are driven by piezoelectric actuators. First of all, what is Ilmenau? It's a quite small town in the middle of Germany. Yeah. Here's Berlin, Munich and Frankfurt. And there you can find Ilmenau. This is just a picture of our laboratory building. And as you see, it's a small town in the middle of the forest. Yeah. Our main research focus is the analysis and the design of nano-positioning and nano-measuring machines, as well as the work with ferrofluids and ferroelastomers and Apedal locomotion systems, um, of which I would like to talk today. What's Apedal? Apedal, this means for us that they don't have wheels, neither legs. No? For example, there are a lot of animals in nature which can move without any legs and of course without wheels. And why not to adapt these principles to build technical locomotion systems? Here are possible applications for them as we are from the engineering faculty always the first question is for what is needed, what are the applications so here you have some mentions first of all I would like to give an overview about different robots that we, are, that we made at our department before I will come to the piezo driven robots for example this is a warm-like locomotion system very similar to that system that Mr. Fang uh, Hongbin presented yesterday. So it's just a robot from several modules with bristles for anisotropic friction and by moving the, or changing the distance between the modules it can move forward. Another thing is for example uh, locomotion systems based on ferroelastomeres. Um, somebody can say this is not a locomotion system and definitely not a robot. It's right, this is nothing else than a piece of ferroelastomere inside of a glass tube. And what you can see here, these are electromagnets. And while switching them on and off, for example, the right one is off and the left one is switched on, and so on we can create a traveling electromagnetic wave and as you see the horn is following this field and this is just a picture of different stages of it yeah? so we have a passive system which can move through tubes uh, this is another horn like locomotion system uh, it consists of a bristle body made from elastic plastic foam. But this has legs. Oh, yeah, now we can call it legs or call it bristles. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing on it is that it has only one actuator inside, which induces the vibration by rotating this motor. Here we have the like, video, for example. This is a robot made for tubes. It can move only in one direction. And due to the bristles, we have and is a total friction. There it comes, yeah. it's a real-time video. And yeah, we created also a mechanical model for it, like for I mean, all of our robots. You can see here on the date this is uh, presented next week on Romanzi uh, conference. And we are also working with um, systems which are moving by the vibration of internal masses. That means that we are changing with the vibration the normal pressure on the contact surfaces of these uh, devices and perform the locomotion like this. Another interesting thing are artificial amelia. An amelia, uh, this system moves while shape changing the shape of the outer body of the system for example here with a lot of micro coils or here with only one actuator while here are small uh, magnets inside the actuator or the motor is rotating and it uses such a vibration and we can change the compliance of this body 
code with the help of pressure. So now let's come to the uh, main subject of my talk, this are piezo-driven micro-robots. As you know, established mi micro-robots or established mobile robots are dominated by a system which are made from rigid bodies and they are connected by joints or hinges. Yeah. This, mm, <coughs> robots have uh, some disadvantages, for example, we need a lot of actuators, we need to control every actuator, and the idea of the authors is a little bit different. We want to use the theory of forced repression of continua, especially plates and beams, to create robots which have only one actuator, for example, piezoelectric actuator, to perform two-dimensional locomotion on different surfaces, for example, solid, flat surfaces, and even the free surface of liquids. Yeah, and it would be good if they are rather small and cheap. A similar, a similar focus was followed by several scientific projects. For example, here you can see a so-called inchworm locomotion device, also driven by a piezoelectric bending actuator, and it can move forward. Or here two biologically inspired objects, a robotic fly and a water strider robot. These are uh, the two robots which I want to set the focus on in this presentation. Um, you will see while this presentation also others these robots, yeah, but these are the main robots for this presentation. This we call Beetle Robot. It's an autonomous robot which can be remote controlled with infrared receiver and programmed. It consists of a repression system. This is this triangular plate where they are fixed at the corners metal wires and on the bottom of this triangular plate there is a bonded or fixed a piezoelectric bending actuator. We have a power supply which is nothing else than a cell phone accumulator and the conductor plate <coughs> with uh, interfaces for charging, programming and telecommanding. This amphibious robot is yeah, we can see it as a platform for further extensions to make a real robot out of it. At the moment, it's nothing else than a locomotion system. You know, a robot needs some kind of mask. So, it's uh, nothing else than a preparation system. Here, such a piezoelectric bending actuator is both the base body and the actuation element of the robot. We have three non classical legs and floating bodies. What I mean with non-classical legs, uh, a classical leg is like our legs, yeah, with hinges and rigid bodies. But non-classical legs, for me, this is more acting as bending transducers or vibration transducers. Uh, here are some characteristical data of this robot. So here you can see the sizes, uh, the mass of them, and the maximum speeds which they can perform. And here you can see the excitation frequencies. While these robots are using reasonable vibrations, you can see that uh, we have a wide range of vibrations, and the more stiff system needs the higher uh, excitation frequencies. Of course, this robot is much heavier than the other one, but it has everything on board for an autonomous movement. Uh, with this slide, I would like to explain the principle of motion for such a robot on a smooth terrain. Uh, this is a similar robot like the presented. This is nothing else than a piezoelectric bending actuator, which can move in both directions. And the transversal vibrations of this actuator are the excitation for this legs and due to the geometry of this legs at the end point, the contact points to the flat surface, uh, some kind of trajectory is produced which is corresponding to the amplitude, to the relation of the amplitudes between the longitudinal and transversal vibrations at the end points of the legs. For example, here we have a high speed video of this robot. And you can see, I hope it's visible here, for example, 
how the legs are moving, the robot itself moves along the straight line. And uh, to show this behavior again, we took, for example, such a robot, fixed it, and set the focus of a scanning electron microscope at the end point of such a leg. The solid scheme here represents the robot's leg's end point um, as a, in a static state, and the movable part here is while the vibration. So we can see that longitudinal and transversal vibrations are performed. Please don't mind too much on the amplitude. Uh, the microscope can make one picture every three seconds, but the vibration frequency is much higher, so this uh, amplitudes, uh, they are not necessarily the maximum. How to control this process? First, there are asymmetries in the system's behavior, so that every part of the uh, every part of the robot is, has a little bit different resonance frequencies, and such a behavior can be, or the uh, control um, the control problem can be described by a simple multibody model. It consists of nothing more than a rigid plate, three rigid legs, which are coupled by torsional springs to the plate, and the asymmetry we can find in a little bit different torsion spring stiffnesses and mass, a different mass of the legs. And here this is a simulation, a picture of simulation for 20 seconds of simulation time. This is the initial state of the model. And here we can see the end positions for different excitation frequencies. Uh, the maximum speed of the model is observed near the first resonance, resonance frequency, and if the excitation frequency is decreased or increased and passes through this resonance, the robot's motion direction changes inside. And here, for example, are experiments with such a piezo-driven robot. It's also a piezo plate with this legs, these three legs are fixed, and we can see for different excitation frequencies, it goes different ways in the plane. This uh, corresponds to the asymmetry in the system, in the system's legs, and this makes it possible to control this robot in the plane two-dimensional with only one parameter, which is the excitation frequency. For the motion on the liquid of such a robot, here we can see the partly submerged uh, robot with its floating bodies. Of course, the behavior of the leg is interesting also. So here we can see uh, some items for different reasons. How can you deal with the superspension so that it doesn't sink? Uh, the surface tension point, I <coughs> We'll mention a little bit later in the presentation. Okay. So uh, these are the eigenforms of the robot's legs. For example, at a relatively low frequency, we can see that the eigenform of the wire is more important and the floating body itself can be considered to be rigid if we are going up with the excitation frequencies. Other eigenforms are like that, of course they are creating a quite a complex um, excitation of the liquid. So, you can see high speed videos of the motion of the robot in the liquid, for example with a relatively small uh, frequency we can see a real roaring movement of the robot legs and because of the asymmetry and the vibration of the legs at a certain angle to the surface and the asymmetric pressure distribution over the partly submerged surface can be found and this creates a hyperdynamic force let the robot go uh, here we have a high speed video with a quite high excitation frequency
Oh yeah, we can see how, for example, streams from the robot leg are traveling away. We can see vertices here. Uh, we made this experiment uh, dispersing so-called recoponium powder to the surface. It's a highly hydrophobic material with a smaller density than water and it follows the streams in the way from the floating body. Okay. Of course, from the engineering point of view, it's important for production and to discover the platform how much weight can we carry. So, we made some analytical considerations about it. This is the well-known young Laplace equation, and here the curvature, the curvature of the water surface for the rotationally symmetric case. We can see, first of all, that there is a wedding and non-wedding case. This is, um, has to do with the surface tension, of course, and with this wedding angle. So here, the surface tension force is pointing downwards, and in the non-wedding case, it's pointing upwards. To uh, calculate the mass of the robot, we uh, consider the ideal half sphere, a rigid one which is partly submerged, and we made the equilibrium of forces of gravitational force, force from biosy, and the force from surface tension, which has, uh, if we're making a full integration, only a vertical component. So, in this diagram, you, one can see the results of our calculations. For example, for different contact angles, we can see how much weight such a robot can carry, corresponding to the radius of this uh, floating body. The robot that you saw in the pictures before, for example, has a weight of 2.5 gram and can carry an additional load of 2.5 gram. Um, the mentioned contact angles here are corresponding approximately to the combination of water and stainless steel, water and brass, water and polyethylene, and water and teflon, and you can see this is the non-wetting case. Yeah, this presentation was quite fast. Um, we talked a little bit about terrestrial and amphibious robots, and I tried to explain a little bit how the motion can be controlled, and show the first steps of modeling, and how the um, maximum carrying capacity of such an amphibious robot can be calculated. Of course, a lot of future work um, is there to do. We need better models, more detailed models, of course, to find the the relation between the input parameter, which is only one, the excitation frequency, and the output parameter, which means the robot's movement in the plane. And also this uh, complex motion of the water can be maybe uh, investigated in detail using this particular image with us on the experiment. So that's all from my side. I would be very happy about comments and questions. Uh, thank you very much. And if you uh, like to know more about the investigations in uh, locomotion systems at our department, I would like to recommend these two books. Thank you very much. Electric actuators are taken from devices which are made uh, 
I think for women, we could just press a button and make a very loud and awful noise to uh, what? find somebody who help you in a dangerous situation. Yeah, this is the and this to electric actuators. Yeah, there is a, a passive metal plate, and on both sides of it, or maybe only on one side, it goes very, very Two centimeters. There are smaller or bigger if you can find them in every uh, size. And of course, they are first to plate, and if I'm applying a voltage to them, they are looking a little bit like a bowl, but of course, the deformation is very small so that we can't see it with our eye. But they are following exactly the electrical voltage signal. So in our, in our robots, where you locate in one of the machines. Okay. Here, where this robot, which is mainly, uh, let's say here, a vibration system, this whole chip or plate is the piezoelectric actuator. And then this robot, which has here some kind of triangular plate, such a piezo a bending actuator is situated in the middle of it. Just bond it. So the robot on the bottom, the primarily the actuations are pushing up and down. Yeah. That's right. Have, have you looked at having them row back and forth? Is that uh, having the legs oscillate side, laterally side to side instead of bouncing up and down? Is yeah. that what this is, for example, in this robot, the case. Yeah. This, uh, this oh, yeah. so electric beam has an actuation like this. So it's pushing the legs by the side, and yeah, the, act of the excitation we can is of course as an influence to the design of our legs. I guess I was thinking though in the, in the fluid robots rather than that's that's on a solid surface, yeah. Yeah. That's on a solid surface. Excuse me. Uh, the year of the books, the, the red book, is published. Uh, was published in uh, 2008 online, I guess. And this is quite new. It was published this year. But this is uh, working <coughs> only with this M module forms. Yeah, I, I have a question. Uh, you, you mentioned that uh, for different frequencies, uh, the robot has different directions and different uh, velocities and did you check some dependency on harmonics so you can see the particular frequency and then you twice it and triple it is it some dependency from the same direction or, 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 or no I, I don't know if, I don't understand this question exactly it's no. working when we are we are increasing the frequency, frequency yes. and if you are finding a resonance frequency. Yes, I mean, so some resonance frequency, and then you take twice this frequency. Ah, <laughs> yeah, of course, this we try. <coughs> sometimes it's working, sometimes not. The uh, system, let's say some of the motions are not stable, and anyway, the system is far away from ideal. <laughs> it's not working. Okay.